Hello and welcome to the fourth part of my LEGO Powered Up programming tutorial that you can also use for Control Plus and LEGO Boost. Last part we did a we made a train that runs in a loop and always drives from station to station. But we wanted to improve the program by checking if it has the right position by using a sensor. And I suggest you to get the sensor because it's not that expensive. It's one of the cheapest LEGO Powered Up sets or LEGO Powered Up products available. And it has many functions and I'll use it in the future parts. So it kind of makes sense. But again, you're not forced to buy it. Anyways, I already attached the sensor to port B of the hub of the train and we will motorize a second model this time. First of all, I attached the light sensor to the back of the Winter Village train. I didn't find a good spot on the crocodile, so I switched to the Winter Village train. But you can include the sensor the way you want into the model. I've got two turquoise plates in front of the stations, one for each station, and the idea is that the train stops at the turquoise plate. Also, we will motorize the Hedwig Owl from LEGO Harry Potter later in this video. But first, let's change the program so that it checks the color. And a small tip, if we go to the second mode and we use this block and we set it to the right port, then we we'll see the actual value that the sensor measures. I can see that the color that is below the train is blue. And now I can simply drag this block, change the port because the color and distance sensor is on port B and select the same color here. Also make sure that the floor doesn't have the same color as the plates because then it wouldn't detect the plates. And I can keep that here to visualize that. We can go back to the simple view. And you can find the red for color block here. So it's also available in the simple view. And how do we adjust the program now? We kind of want to wait until it hits the station or until it's in front of the station. First, we did that by waiting 5.5 seconds, but now we can wait for the color. So we can simply break that there and it will kind of work. However, there's one thing that we have to keep in mind. It probably won't be a big problem for this model. But let's say that you have a slow train and let's say that you have a big blue plate, then it might still be on the plate before it starts again. So we kind of want to start the motor and make sure that there's a small delay after we started so that it doesn't count the same plate twice. For that, we can simply put the sound block behind the start and now it will start the motor. It will play the sound and while it plays the sound, the train will drive and it will leave the plate. And there is one more thing that we have to keep in mind. The Winter Village train drives backwards if we move the motor forwards. The motor is kind of uh, the wrong way around in the set, so we have to turn it the other way around. I will put it to negative numbers and I will put it to negative 30 because the train is pretty fast and I don't want it to miss the mark. Because if it drives too fast, it might not detect the right color or if the plate isn't big enough and I only have two, my, two by two plates, so it's better to have a smaller speed. Now we can test the program. I can also show it while we test it. Now I can start it. You can see that it still detects blue. But it doesn't move. Why doesn't it move? Do you have an idea? Remember what I told you last part? This motor block is only for motors that contain speed regulators or uh, can measure the speed. However, I use a train motor in the Winter Village train and that one doesn't have a speed controller. So we have to use a normal dump motor block. 
we can simply replace the old block. But it should go into the loop. And now we can test it again. We can see that the program works as expected. I will stop it. Basically, now the train drives until it sees blue, then it stops, waits, and starts to drive again. And that's kind of the behavior that an OWL can have. Let's say that you give a post OWL a letter to uh, an important person or an important letter. Then we give it to her and she should start flying until she reaches the goal and then she sh should stop flying. And we can implement that in this app as well. I connected both hubs. I use a Technic hub for the O and a normal hub for the train. You can see that they have numbers and it won't access the Technic hub if I use the normal programming blocks. So I simply put this into the first position and now all the blocks will go or will use the Technic hub. And I can already disconnect the train because we won't need it anymore. So, let's write the second program. We need another starting point. Don't press this start button if you have two starting points to different programs. You can click on this starting point to run just this one path. But in this case, it wouldn't be wise to use this starting point because then both paths would be executed at once. We need a loop because we want to do that all over again. We want to wait until someone gives a letter to the OWL. We can do that again by using this wait for block. The current distance sensor uses port B of the Technic Hub, in my case, and the color is yellow. By the way, you can check the marks on the hub if you're not sure which port to use. They are lettered A, B, C, and D for the Technic Hub and A and B for the Train Hub. We want to wait until it gets a letter, then the O should start to flap. It uses a normal, simple linear motor, so this block is the right one. But uh, we will have to put it to, uh, to a high number, because the flying mechanism has a bit of resistance, and it will only move if we give enough energy to the motor. Then we can make a flying noise. Sadly, there are no O noises here. So I decided to use a plain noise. Let me see if I can make it a bit louder for you. I decided to use this noise. And then we can wait a bit or we can directly stop the motor. So we can think about what this program does. First it starts, then it goes into the loop and remembers, hey, I'm in a loop. This would be important at the end of the loop. Then it waits until it sees something yellow. In my case, it's the letter. If we move the letter in front of the sensor, it will start the motor to flap, then it will make a noise, and it will stop flapping. And again, it will wait until we give it another letter, or the same letter. So that's how the program works. Let's try it out. The old works as expected. That's great. And now I'll give two more ideas on what you can do with this uh, wait for color block. 
first of all, you can make an animal that waits until it's seeded by a uh, food with a different color or with a special color. It can make a sound if it gets seeded. It can move its hand or something if it gets seeded. And the second idea is to make some kind of delivery robot that follows a line of bricks that have a given color to the fridge. The program for that is quite tricky, so it's quite a challenge. You might not be able to do that on your own. We will visit the idea to follow a line later again, but for now it's just an idea. If you're bored and you don't know what to do, you can try to make a robot that follows a line. Make sure that the robot has a small turning ready, because if it's too large, it might lose the line. And make sure that the line is thick enough that it can stay on the line and that the sensor detects the line correctly. You can always use this block to check if it detects the color correctly. Anyways, that's it for this part. Again, please give me feedback. Did you understand everything in this video? Again, I'm not a native speaker, so I'm sorry for uh, inconveniences that are caused by this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next part.